Okay? Okay. Um, okay, so first start with your name, how old you are, and where you grew up, the kind of community it was. Hi, my name is Yaakov Rubenstein. I grew up in Bar Park, Brooklyn, New York. I'm, 20, I'm now 22, turning 23, February 23. Yeah, okay, and the community that you grew up in, you just not everybody knows what's Bar Park. Bar Park is just a, a borough. Really, but what kind orthodox, of community? Orthodox, real ultra ultra orthodox Hasidic people. Okay. What was your life like growing up? Growing up really Hasidic, the long pairs, mm -hmm. long with the back of the Shabbos. You know. You had a large family. I have with me is five. Siblings, um, I have um, three boys and two girls. Okay, so you had a very strong dress code and every day of your life was very strict. All yes. the rules were very strict in yeshiva? Very strict. Okay, and now you're not the way you were when you grew up, right? No, now it sounds like, oh, like, uh, I don't know where I am. Because coming out of such a close place where they, where they, they don't educate you about nothing. Yeah. So when you grow up to be... When I, like I'm now 22, that's why I look like this, because I have no clue. But why, what made you start thinking? Like what, was the, what do you think the first step was that you didn't want the to be a part of the community? The thing was, because I always looked up to, to the community to respect the religion about it, mm -hmm. and uh, when the rabbis itself could do such a thing, molesting boys, and not, not just doing that, okay, and keeping it quiet, not coming out with it, and so what do you expect? Like then, like my head like exploded. You understand? Because when someone t is telling you like when you grow up, your whole life knowing one thing, and if some and, and that's for sure not good. Like you know the health to it, like if you're that. So like everything explodes suddenly. Yeah. It's like a domino effect. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like, well, then they might like, like, what, like, what's going on, like, what's really going on? Okay, so, I know this is about tough topic, can you then, talk then, a little bit about that? About the molestation, about what just blew your mind? A little bit, like, start. Mind that the guy, like, the guy who molested me, what, what he asked me to do to him, and what he did to me, was, was like, Called it an epiphany, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like when you when imagine your mother, your your father coming in and telling Melissa, please rob a house. <laughs> For real, you gonna get a, you gonna get like damn it, like what is this? How old were you the first time? Oh, the first time, pretty pretty young. And it was a few times, but the 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 big deal is about the about the leaders, the yeah, yeah. you know, people that you people trust. Go, yeah. And also, when you go through, like, you have, you have in, in, in Shiva, you know, you have with, with friends. Yeah. When you grow up, that's one thing you experience. Yeah. And you get over it. But if a grown man does it, but if a grown man does it and he knows about it. Yeah. And he knows what it, and when he does, that's the difference. That's where the difference comes. And that, um, that's what ma that makes me very unclear because I don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah. What? They're supposed to protect you and you yeah, yeah, exactly. And then the what, one what did you mean by guys in yeshiva do it is one thing? What happens in yeshivas? If you have like when you're fifteen or when you're eight years old or whatever you, whatever age you are and you have with your kind of age mm -hmm. you play around sex um, sexually, that's experience. And then you have adult not a stranger adult, an adult who you know and who you know that he is the, he's like the guidance for you, mm -hmm. like he goes with the talus and it down to the elef and the zinc dvar and the ginnam, you know, mm -hmm. in the mikveh, and he can't allah that And like, and I know, by the way, talking about that individual, my father always, like, not but it got like, he, he, he it got like he's a, he didn't look him down, you know, so I respected him. Uh -huh. And I, I and I remember telling my father so that you're gonna one day like 
like when I'm gonna tell you what's going on in the thing, like you, you're not gonna believe it. You're not gonna, and I, I and I never told him it. You never told him what happened. No, what oh. I told him when, like, when I tell you, you'll really be shocked, like what was going on. What did go on at that time? Did the two of Yeshiva? What happened at that time? Maybe I mean, cash? They yeah. made up. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. They made up a complete like. A lot of times you can have one, one, if like think if things are based like one percent based on the truth, but this is where you come in. I come in at like every day in Shiva, start davening after davening. My my principal calls me and tell me what happened. Eight thirty Monday night, and I have no clue what happened Monday night eight thirty. They have a witness. I don't know, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Oh, you know what? By the way, I was by my. In the man, I was learning whatever, I have a Fabrice, whatever I went through. And he called him up, confirmed it, then he changed the time to 9.30. And then he changed the date to the Tuesday. Then he told me, listen, this is what happened. We didn't have to explain, and they threw me out. What did they and say happened? The, ah, uh, they said, and then whatever, after like 45 minutes, five or 45 minutes letting me wait, he tells me, I'm, a, I'm 18th Avenue on 50th Street, remember anything in a garage with a girl? No, you know, like, I don't have no what the hell you're talking about. Did you even know about girls at that time when you got I didn't, like, I, 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 it wasn't, like, so strange, but I never, I, I never had nothing with a girl, like, to be why do you an think, adult Why life. do you think they made it up? I why? know we talked about it before, but if you talk they, about why, it. Why do you think they made it up? Yeah. Oh, it's probably, they be, I don't know, it's probably they want to kick me out. They want to, but why do you I think they want to kick you out? And you, we talked about it before, you mentioned... That the day before or sometime before they wanted. He I also when they talk about when that? he kicked me out, I want also to make this clear. And this is when I got my. I think that was the worst. I don't even know, yet, but I think if I remember good, that was a very very hard like thing to get over with. When I was kicked out, the the guy who molested me, one of the, on his his son. Mayor Lebowitz. Mayor, yeah, uh -huh. called me down to his office. And he, he asked, started, started asking me questions that, um, that which kind of DVDs I had in camp, read, like which kind, like what was the worst, like rated, like, rated R, he didn't have triple X, they started talking about those all kind of sex, sex, like sexual stuff, then he told me he's going to make up a time, I should go home, and then he's going to meet me. We met up, and we had to go, I had a, to have a threesome, me and him, with another girl. Well, so this is before they talked about kicking you out, or after? This is what, after, the, like, the, the, like my principal told me, you're yeah, out. He wanted to see me, the other, like the principal of the Shibirada, wanted to see me in, in, in his office before I leave the building. Wow. Oh. So, and then that's, that's when that happened. And, mm -hmm. that, and, I, and, I, when, and when I went home, like Mayla, like Mayla was a kid, they just kicked me out about a story with a girl. And I can't say nothing. And now they want you, you cannot, to have like, a piece you can't, you know, you know, like I'm telling you, it's like mama, Why didn't you say I can't something? explain. What? Why didn't you say something? If you were kicked out, and this is after they kicked you out, they wanted you to have a threesome. So because how? Because also you told me like if you if you're gonna say, first of all, no one is gonna believe you, and you're not gonna go no, like you're not going nowhere. Like he's gonna ruin my name. That was the deal, and no one would believe, who would believe in such a thing. Yeah. And this thing, maybe the story I remember. At from from I told, I was so frightened of the story. At that time, I told it for. Two friends, if I remember only, and I remember they telling me like, damn, like no one ever believed, like, like they wouldn't believe in me. But this is what happened. This yeah. is what, and I, I'm like, I was going on days without talking to no one because I can't talk, and I was going on much more for the, but for the first few days when it happened, I was like, what am I supposed to do now? What do you they kicked me out about a girl, and now he's coming in and he wants to do something. What did you tell people? So, Why were you kicked out? What did what did you tell your parents? What did you tell? Why were you? Was not they 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 told they they told my father and my, but my father wasn't so angry because he knew that doesn't make like this this was really honest like it didn't make sense because my father was together with me and the same wow. times that my principal pointed out like nine thirty and I told my father remember we saw um, John McCain talk nine thirty speech whatever yeah everything made sense and he kept on changing the time of the dates and they wanted me out and such a story so to make wow. it clear the day you got thrown out of yeshiva the other rosh yeshiva called he and he was my level yes 
And he told you that after you go home, he wants to meet up with you and have a threesome with a different girl that he knows. Yes. But you just got thrown out of yeshiva because they told you you had sex with a woman. With the woman, yeah, with the girl. Yeah. Did you meet up with this Rosh Hashiva Meyer? Yes. And did you go have sex with him with a threesome? No, I went with him in a car, but we didn't end up going having sex. He and made how? phone calls, he picked, he, picked, he picked someone up. I don't know who the guy was. I think it, might, I think it was Go ahead. And he was trying to get through to a girl, but the, it, it never ended, ended, ended up happening. How come you went to meet up with Rosh Hashiva to go to a girl when he told you... Again? Why did you decide that you're going to meet up with him afterwards to go out to have a threesome with him? But he didn't tell me he's going to have a threesome. He didn't tell me he's going to talk to me more. Whatever he wants to talk to me, whatever he can have time now. And he wants to talk to me about... Okay, so in the car he told you he wants to have a threesome with you? Yeah. Okay. Then, we got thrown out of Yeshiva. What did you do? After being thrown out of Yeshiva, did you get a job? Did you... I don't know exactly whatever happened, but the next Yeshiva I went was Kasha. And they took me in because, not because I was just lucky. I was, I was lucky because, because my family knows Kasha. But if not for that, I would never be able to be accepted anywhere. Because your name was that you were with a girl that you would keep Yeah, out. so basically Kasha, so Kasha took me, like regardless, they knew who I am, so they had to take me. Uh -huh. So I had like protection. And how was that? That was the worst, also one of the worst that they long years year of my life. One, like, that was one year, a lot of bullying over there, and a lot of really orthodox restriction stuff. Like, you can't even have, like, them sing, you sing by Rebbe's Tish, mm -hmm. also not. Only, like, um, toilets, whatever, you know, like, speeches. Oh, wow. No music at all, no, and I used to wake up, like, 4, four o'clock in the morning, go to the Wake up learning the whole day till night, go to sleep for one year and being bullied around the whole year and no one gave a damn. Who bullied you around? Avram, Avram Rabiner. He, no, but you mean he was a friend he of your He was a friend of you in Yeshiva? He learned to be in Mikash and then he went to Israel. I went, I stayed in Mikash and then we met him and then he came to Kasha when I went to Kasha. So we met up back in Kasha. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of bullying? What did he do? He was sexually harassing, bu bullying me, and he was bullying me, meant like, in all kinds of ways, by knocking me out of games, not, not by not me, like, I didn't participate in games, by talking, um, like, n like, nasty stuff behind my back, making group talks, like, when I'm not, like, when I come, everything get, comes quiet, and... What kind of, what kind of, um, sexually, what kind of sexually... Um, he always, he, he always, like, made fun of me that I that I abused someone else and at the same time it was the this it was so strong when I think back of it like I don't know how it went but it the, he was so strong in power that he just walked over from just the, in the middle making fun of me. He walks over to me and and tell me come to the bathroom and he he does oral sex in me, swallows me, swallows and walks out, walks away and Oh, it's the same story again. That I, happened a couple of times. That this specific story happened once, in in, in whatever Kasha, and I had previous stuff when he messed me and Kasha. Okay. So what what effect do you think it had on you today? That that thing I I, mean, I don't even know because I have so much problems sexually. On but it's not like physically problems. It's mentally problems because mm -hmm. I was. I was always like... You were introduced to sex in a very bad way. Exactly. But you had mentioned, when we talked a different time, you had mentioned that um, Meyer, or the, the guy that went to Meyer, prison, yeah, son. the guy that went to prison wasn't your big problem. I mean, he didn't he affect you so much. Oh yeah, he was a big He big was problem. a big effect on That him? was a big problem. It no, was, the story that happened, but while you were growing up, was he one of the big oh, people that no, was hurting no, your life? That when I was growing up, I had problems, I had issues. That's one thing, mm -hmm. and then when you get an epiphany, like I told you, when your father wants to have a few sex, that's like an epiphany. Yeah, yeah. That's when I first had it, like, with, when, it, when, like, when everything like came crashing down to me, like. So it all together, you think? World. Like I don't know, I don't know what's going on anymore. Like I don't know what's what. What what else sexually happened to you when you were younger, um, at 
at home. Like, did anybody from your family also try to sexually abuse you, or was just people in the yeshivas? What's your first memory of sex? Hmm? What's your first memory of sex? I think that I really... I grew up very interesting because I, I knew everything about having a baby when I was younger, but I never knew mm -hmm. about sex. This is the interesting, this is the interesting thing. Yeah. So I always knew exactly what's going on in the body and how it's, how everything, but I never knew about sex. How did you this, know about this it? The time this is the first time I'm, I'm telling this to anybody, that, that, like, that, like that one. Because that's very interesting. Because, because I used to study, I used to like look in books, in pregnancy books, but I never knew about sex. Because pregnancy books were lying around? Because your sisters? Why were I had a one time, I got, I got, I got a hand on one. Uh-huh. And... Uh, whatever, I saw, but... When I first figured out... Uh, when did you leave Kasho Yeshiva? When I was just probably between 17 and 18. And what happened after the Yeshiva? You just decided not to go to Yeshivas anymore? No, after... After Kasho, I went to Monsi. To another yeshiva? To get started. When did you leave all the yeshivas? At what age? Um, it's probably around 18, 19 time. I was like a half year in case started. Then I went to like supposedly a year in Flabush. But that was like in and out, and then it stopped like one off a week, and I was out. What were you doing then since? Started, then I started working. Tell us your journey since you left Yeshiva. What, like, start telling your journey what happened? The, the most like. You got a job? Um, let me see. I don't remember exactly which parts of my life came first and which parts of my life came no, after. That's like, okay, just the things that you did. But it's a lot of pieces. I, I had a pretty a few good jobs that I like driving trucks and I got and I was going pretty good but I, but then I had something else going wrong in a way. I had my friend my friends take advantage but I had, you know, my jobs. Did you have any education when you left Yeshiva? No. And to the very straight on day three, I have the it's like education but like you see me. It's a sweet education. I'm not I, I don't know, or maybe it's only me that like, I haven't seen the same, but they don't people give seem to judge me like I like, they think like I like, um, like over here, like when I meet people first, like, oh yeah, he's a, uh, they don't have, what does that mean? it's like, it's for me a shame to come out and to ask someone to educate me, so how am I going to ever be educated, understand, that's a big fear, and that's, most people who are ashamed of it, in the community has a big problem because they're never going to face reality in life. Mm -hmm. And I am willing to take the kick for it, you know? Like, okay, I'm a, I'm a 23 year old baby, okay. But I'll grow up, but, I, but I'll, You'll learn. I'll learn. I'm not going to stay in this, you know? I want to, I want I want to, like, I want to, I want to, like, I want to fix, like, um, to know the reality, to know the... Um, what's it called? Secular world? I want to know the world straight because I don't know it yet straight. I, I, I have a know, question. I'm really confused. Okay, so that's with education. What about re with relationships? Because of your early sexual experiences and you said it was normal in Yeshiva to be with boys, is it because there was no girls around to be with boys? That's what happens? That's what goes on? No, um... In Yeshiva itself, you never, you can't talk about it, you know, this is, mm -hmm. like, that's a fantasy, like, no one gets to know about it till they get to the age, and you get, you get your lessons learned, and you go on. That's about that, but, um, about my life, my journey, when I came out of Yeshiva, I met, I remember my first relationship, 
I made I had this girl and I really did it more of because of the of desperation to catch something. And I knew it wasn't for me but but like the reason but but like cause I did it and I took her I, so I made a commitment to her that I'm not gonna leave her for like it's like she's not just a piece of garbage you know like I took you and I'm gonna keep you but she cheated on me right now and I went away and then I started then started coming the drugs did she introduce you to drugs it came it came from here so like if if not for her it's probably I don't know. That's how I ended up taking the, the heavy stuff, but maybe she gave it to my friend, my friend gave it to me, and then it was a one big team doing, doing it. I don't know how to put it in the puzzle. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But you, okay, so this sex thing is your molestation stuff, it's, is it still a big part of your life? Of how you, that's not my question, how yeah. you deal with other people and the effects like on to you see, today? I don't know, I can't, like, uh, I have big problems. Like what what kind of problems? Just if you could explain so we can understand more. I have problems. I can. I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have like a. I, I can't express. I can't express my my emotions normally. And I don't know what's right and wrong with between a girl between a, a man and a woman. You understand? I was always. I'm always like a. I like how I used to treat girls. The best of my not like to my the best like I like mm -hmm. I want to be treated. But now. My head tells me the other way, like you stu like you stupid. You have to take the girl and you know, push her again like and like be fine. Yeah, you, yeah, like yeah, you have to force her to be with you. She's not gonna come to you if you don't do nothing. Like my friends tell like, so I don't know what's going on. Do you, do I have to force this girl to do something? Do I have to talk to her? And who's gonna tell me that? Which person in your life had the biggest effect on you because they molested you when you're younger that you had effect now? in your life, which is talking to girls or feeling like you're not worth anything. The Love Bitch case, I'll tell you why that the Lee Boots case. Not because what he did to me personally when he molested me, but the outcome of the case. That Who's this Love Boots case? What do you mean by Love Boots case? Yeah. I remember reading in the newspaper that there was a guy called uh, Baruch Levowitz who got arrested. Yes. Because he molested yes. eight, eight or nine children. And your name Much was more than that, but that and your name was also in the newspaper, right? Yeah, correct. What did you have with Lebowitz? I had he he molested me sexually, but what what, what did I want to bring? Uh, I was talking. You wanted to come to the point. We're gonna get to the point. Let's let's go. He's going into the story. Right. He's going from the story just because you're talking about the effects that happened to you today. So even oh, when yeah, you exactly. speak so out, so what do I do exactly? If you were, if you weren't here, like say, mm -hmm. if you if you wouldn't pick me up. Mm -hmm. I am every day in my room, sitting and sitting alone, and sitting and sitting and sitting and sitting, and I don't know what the fuck to do. Do you read? No, because I, I don't know what, like, where do I start now? No one wants to deal with me, no one wants to talk to me. How come? Because it came out of, because I, I became the center of attention. Because? Of, Why? of Leibowitz. Why? Tell, like, can because you talk I about put, this case? Because I, I was the one who put him, who put him away. Why? How did you get to that? Because other people hurt you also, right? Other mm -hmm. people molested you, but you didn't put them away. So can you talk about what happened in the Leibowitz case? He, I guess, but by now, I'm more educated like I was then. So okay. when I look back on the case, I see that this is, this was Ms. probably, I can't say 100% because I don't One know. Minute. How about we, this, this um, how about we, cut. no, how about we, Start the story of what you thought had happened when, before you were more educated, and then we're gonna get to the part. By that time, I didn't know. I was. Okay, so talk just to the walls like that. Okay, by that so time. Just talk about the events of why, why the Leibowitz case started and involving you. So just talk about what happened. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'm um, okay. In order, just to so we know. I'm angry case. on the community, and it's probably from the, from the, like the first time talking. It will take a few times, you know, until okay. we open up. But I have so much, I don't know where to, where, where, where to start even, but when I, I was so, I'm so angry on the community, and on the, not, not the community, like on the cult. Yeah. So I was driving a truck, and I, ha and I had some problems, issues, legal issues, and, it, and they told me about someone who can help me with mm -hmm. it. So the guy who came to help me with it told me, asked me about if I was a victim, I thought, so I told him yes. 
Who so came to you as another Hasidic guy? Another Hasidic guy? Yeah, another Hasidic guy. Also involved in the community yes. in a big yes. way. Yes. Why did he come to you? Because he had to help me out with uh, with my issue okay. and it was and, 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 his, and his thing why he came to me that he wanted to pick me up because I'm a victim from Leibovitz. And he was fighting Leibovitz. No, he went around was probably finding out who's 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 who's, who's like he was looking for victims. You can't just pick up any, any anyone. You have to have someone who was a victim for him. Why he wanted to fight Leibovitz? He was in the middle of a case with Leibovitz and he wanted yeah, more victims? Yeah, I don't know what exactly yeah, with him because at that time, that, I'm not, that's what happened. He came to me and okay. told me, yes, he took me to, to the police. So and Kellner from, there, from there on, Kellner picked you up it's one, over. What? Kellner picked you up one day and he told you that he's going to take you to a detective. No, right? He took me right away. Why? What did he tell you? Why did you go? I wanted this favor and he told me about this case and so I was actually, for sure, you know, because the angle, like, imagine you have, like, um, the same thing what I'm doing right now, to come out with a, like, I'm something worth, you understand me? Like, you know what I mean? Like, if, if I have the opportunity to put the community, to put the, 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 the community on, this, the, on the right way, so let's do it. And so you finally had a voice to explain what happened like, to you? Like, because it came out of, and they knew, it's probably when now the way I think back that the way I am, I'm so angry that I'm not going to give up. And like I did, I didn't give up. And they, what I think now is most probably, they had, the, they had a premeditated plan. Who is they? Which I don't know. People had a premeditated People plan had, to and do that. And that might be important also for the community to know the difference between this guy has to be in jail for what he did. But I don't know. If, if it's if you want to come out with it about the corruption, what was going on behind it? Yeah, maybe that's important. That too. seems to be important. That is very important. What went on? But there? what? It's I don't the know. Truth. I don't know. You know, I don't know. We want the, we want the truth. I know, we, but I can tell you, I don't know. Okay, so maybe we should go back and say the sequence of events. So Kellner picked you up, and he did you a favor in exchange. He asked you to do this, and you were happy to do it not, because not, yeah, because sure, you were hurt in your life. You wanted. Speak up. This guy, yeah, he hurt me. I'm going to speak up. Yes. So you went to talk to the detective. Yes. And then what happened? How come all everyone's talking negative about you and not about no, the case? No, it took two years. So, can you it talk a little two, bit about yeah, that? Yeah, it, it, it took two years. The whole two years, everything was going so smooth. And all, like, nothing. Talking to detectives? And yeah, it, was just not, it wasn't no big deal. The big deal became when the, when the conviction came that when they arrested him because no one believed that this is going to happen. It's going to end up like that. Okay. So what happened when they arrested What him? should have happened? What should have happened? They was probably, the, 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 the government wanted it to give him help, which he refused. And it was probably the other side of the corruption wanted something else. The people and, they, and they had in mind he's going to give up way before. But he didn't seem to give up to no, I don't know why he didn't give up on such a small on such a small, whatever, but... How many chances is that the guy who picked you up and took you to the police wanted to make money from the level, which was by telling them that if you give me a sum and some money, that we make sure that Rubenstein is not going to go against you, and if you don't give me money, it will be against you. How many chances do you think that this is the real true story? This makes, a lot of, uh, this makes sense. I can't tell you for sure because I wasn't there and I still don't know the truth. Did they try to buy but you out? But the truth I do know is that he did it to me and that's why... He belongs in jail. He belongs in jail. But how the whole, why the whole thing happened, I have no, no idea. But I can, there's chances, you know, you can think about did it. Did they try to buy you out? You can take it in, in, in consideration, you know, there was corrupt, a lot of corruption going on. How many more kids? was supposed to come testify because you were the only a one lot. testifying. There, there are a lot, a lot. No, that's for sure. See, this is the issue over here and that's why it's so fragile. Like, um, it's very dangerous to play with it because he's a guy who put away a lot of, a lot of children. He, he, he molested a lot, of, a lot of kids. And me, he only did oral sex. But the other, the other kids, he did other, other stuff. And if you're going to come out with the corruption that we put away, maybe it's, oh, maybe something's going on. So this might not be a good thing because this guy has to be in jail, you understand? No, no. We're clear on and a guy that molests a child needs to be but in jail. But if you bring out the corruption, then you, don't, then you have to, you have to well, some I, kind of message to let the people know 
uh, exact picture. Give us this, is so, yeah. this is so fragile. But we're trying to focus also on you, your life, how it affects you. So yes, why? It affects look at me. Why was there a backlash on you? Why did the community, you said no one's talked to you, why did they come because, against because, you if he's a bad because, guy? Because he was a very uh, looked up guy, and everybody liked him. Like Shlomo Kabbalah, he used to sleep by him. Mm -hmm. He's a very known big guy. His, his son's a big guy in Israel. And for 30 years he put away a guy, like, no one feels it because they didn't Why have Why do you think he them. got so much, so many years? Did he deserve so many years? No, the judge told him all the time, they gave him options, even though he didn't want to take options. That, that ultimately happened to him, and did they you, told him. Did you get any threats or anybody, while this case was going on, did people try to tell you to back off? People were, to me, no one really bothered me, but my father bothered me because I told him right away, you know, Talk to my father because I don't know nothing about it. Like I knew that when I was when I like that happened really like almost by the end of the case. Mm -hmm. What with the, the thing what I'm telling you right now? This happened like almost by the end of the case that I mixed to my father. My father even didn't know when when the when the whole thing began. Oh. No, like my mother didn't know no one knew about it. But then I saw like I I, I like I started getting cold feet. When when I hear that like my like my my head like opened up like something maybe you know I don't know like so then Why? my father like what take, you talk to them you know you like you know how to deal with this kind of stuff because I'll ultimately will be convinced to take money because I'm I I was a drug addict at that point and and if someone wants to give me even ten thousand dollars you don't have to give me fifty just give me even they one thousand they tried to give you money at one point they tried to do something with a is Whatever. it the same guys, the Kellner guy that came to take you in, tried to give you money? They tried to buy you off? Or was it the guy that... Leibowitz. Leibowitz guy. Again. Who tried to give you money? Who tried to tell you afterwards to shut up? Was it the Leibowitz guy or the guy that took you to talk? The Kellner guy? Nonsense question. Okay, so you were told to talk. Once you spoke, suddenly, after two years, for some reason, people wanted to shut you up, right? Yeah, but, but, but they, saw, they saw it's coming to a bitter end. Who shut you up? Who wanted to try it? shut you up? Oh, a lot of people called my father, I don't even know. Was it, do you think it could have been also the Kellner guy? The guy that took you in to begin with? Did he also want you to be quiet? No. He wanted the guy to go to prison? All the way, yeah. He never, that's the, that's the, that's the fishy part. If, if he would, if he would have told me, I, 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 I would have told you for sure 100% this is a scheme. That's why I'm not, that's why I'm not sure because he kind of like always told me it's really, you're gonna go to court, you're gonna tell the truth, you're gonna tell the truth. Mm -hmm. So that's, and I still don't know what's what going makes on you think? Now. What makes you think then it could have been money? Because I have some. reasonable doubts, like uh, people who I, I take, I take their opinion and consideration uh -huh. to believe a little bit makes sense that told me that he's a guy, such a guy who can do such kind of stuff. And this thing, you know, did you gave ever see something? Feet, gave, gave me cold feet to deal, to deal with him. That's why I stopped to talking to him. In the beginning of the trial, there oh. was a guy, Terkotov, your friend, who came... Man, not my friend. friend. No, not your friend. There was a guy, Terkotov, who also got molested by Leibowitz. He came to say that... I don't know about that story. He, he, one minute, he came to say that a whole long thing that he said people cried, the jury cried, and he said that what Lebowitz did to him. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you met him a few days later in a car, right? And you talked yeah. about the case. And what, by that time, scared you when he left the car? he told me some kind of stuff, which I don't know. I could tell you then, he, he told me some kind of stuff that gave, gave me cold feet, and I didn't want to have to, and you can look to me the light. What did he tell you? He backed out? Not like, what? Did the guy back down in the end? Is yeah. That what so Everybody what did he tell you? Out. Why? What do you think? What, what did he tell you? I don't, I, oh, Why I, should he back out? He didn't tell me to back out. But he was worried. Well, he you? told me that he's worried about his, his thing, what he has with him. Like, we, there was three separate Why did he feel guilty that he felt he was he did out? Because he told me that he did something wrong in his thing. What, what did he do what wrong? Did he do wrong? Whatever. He lied? Something like that. He lied? Something like that. I'm not sure why Do you why think exactly, the other guys lied like also? That. Other guys, no, I don't know. But such a thing that he told me, and mm -hmm. he, that thing, when, like, when I, when I heard that, that was the last time, like, 
So something is going on. Yeah, something is going on, and this is way, way above. It's it was supposed. To, it, it seemed simple. And yeah, it was. it's it's not like just he, he's not in jail because just because you know this probably was a whole. You came to put away mm-hmm. a person in jail because he molested you, and you, you, you figured out that people actually trying to do something at the same time. Yeah, They're kind of using you. I yeah, b- uh, big time. What what do you think they? And they left me because they, because I put the thing that I think because. Yeah. Um, I think they used me maybe because they left me t- to die, like to nothing. I have nothing now. The case is over. No one's talking to me. No one is. Even the counter guy, you in contact no, with this not. guy? Yeah. Why are he, why he doesn't call me? Only if he like if he finds me once in the street, he talks to me. But he never calls me since that story happened. And I called him up like, there's stuff you're not honest with me or whatever. I I, I gave him all. all Um, Did that guy thing and then he told me what the shit you know, like whatever but since I squared like squared off with him and I told him like I gave him like a hint that I have like something's going on he, we stopped talking like we didn't stop talking but uh-huh. officially stopped talking we don't talk anymore in the phone. why was he why do you think you ever asked him why he got involved because it's your case it's why son, did he get because his son his son was also molested by the same guy as well as I don't know molested exactly what he was tried to molesting him did his son talk before the trial? I think so, yeah. You did? Yeah. Okay, so did you Thanks. get what you wanted out of the trial? I I got exactly, yeah. It take it but but it took it cost me a lot. You understand? I got I got out that to prove that I'm i I'm something. You can't you Taco, you know what, you only did oral sex. You didn't, you know, um have sex like anal sex or something like that. You didn't do something Thank God, nothing like that. But don't buy my phone. But don't, yeah, but don't, you what? He violated. Yeah, and, and, and that's it. it. Would there have been any other way that you would have been happy if it, the case would have turned out that he wouldn't have gone to prison, but any other way? Sure, I didn't want What, what did you want? Like, this, like, like everybody thought in the beginning. No one, even the, the government, when you talk about the DA, everybody had in their head that it's going to end up in probably some small... Like that, but like he was such a wise guy. What did you want from him? What would you still want if he claims to you now? Now? Yeah. I don't want nothing now. Okay. What did you want before he went to prison? You should come to me and tell me I'm sorry. And you would have dropped the charges? It's probably when he'd come like two years, two years ago, not by the day of the court. That was too late already. When let's say a year, like let's say a year and something ago, when then he and he and he, he 